So uh, tonight's topic is about egg freezing and the reason that we're going through egg freezing as a topic is that we've had a change in the regulations in Canada and because there's been a change in the regs um, they're making it a lot more difficult to use fresh donors. That doesn't mean we can't use fresh donors. We can and we will continue to do so and in fact we've registered and notified with Health Canada to be a centre that does that. So it's something we are completely prepared to offer our patients but they have made it more challenging. You need a minimum of two sexually transmitted disease screens. They want genetic testing. They want extensive counseling, a uh, complete history, and then a complete physical as well. So there's a lot of components that we have to go through to match everybody up and make sure that it's, uh, it's okay. Um, and so it's really important to be able to offer patients options because the more options you have, the more informed a choice that you can make. So in light of that, one of the options is use a fresh donor and one is a frozen. So let me explain what that means. A fresh donor is uh, myself and my wife want to have another child and um, we feel that her eggs are not suitable for whatever reason. Um, and honey, I love your eggs, you're amazing. We have three great kids, but um, for whatever reason in our particular hypothetical situation, her eggs are no good. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use an egg donor. So we go and find Suzy Q, and Suzy Q is a 23 or 24 year old. She's healthy, she's willing to donate her eggs. She goes through an IVF cycle, we retrieve the eggs, we take my sperm, we inject it into her eggs, make embryos, and we then take the embryos and put them into my wife. So it's donor eggs used fresh, we grow the embryos fresh, we transplant the first one fresh, and then we freeze the extra ones. The alternative is to say, look, we can't quite find the right person for us. Um, maybe Suzy Q has already offered to freeze her eggs in, a, in an egg bank, just like there are sperm banks. So you can actually access batches of frozen eggs in the United States, import them into Canada, use them here for IVF, make embryos, and then take the embryos and while the embryo is still fresh, again transfer it in. But the eggs were frozen, so you're thawing the eggs, you're injecting them with the sperm, you're making the embryo and the embryo is then getting transplanted into whoever the carrier is. So the question is, do frozen eggs work as well as fresh eggs do? And a lot of people that I've been talking to recently are telling me, yes, the centers that they work with, especially some of the surrogacy and donor companies, are saying that the centers that they are working with, the fertility centers, they're getting the same success rate. And I was kind of scratching my head saying, that's not my knowledge of this. So let's have a look and see what kind of success rates you can get with frozen eggs. Now there aren't any sort of fresh versus frozen comparison studies I'm aware of to directly compare fresh to frozen, but I certainly know what our success rates are with fresh and I wanted to kind of share what the success rates are with frozen. So there's two studies. So there's this one, and I'll bring that nice and close to the cameras for you guys to look at. <clears throat> and the uh, lead author is Goldman. And then there's this study as well. And so this one is by uh, Pelin Seal, C-I-L. So uh, I'll go through each of these. There's two studies on this topic, and, and one of them, quite interestingly, actually can show you um, what the full sort of uh, equation is to calculate what your probability of having a live birth is. So in the first study, they actually did a meta-analysis, and they took 10 different studies, conglomerated 2,265 cycles where they froze the eggs, and then looked at the outcomes of those cycles to determine you know, what the outcomes were. And as I mentioned, egg freezing is very common now. So about 50% of centers are offering egg freezing. We offer it as well. In particular for our cancer patients, it's a very good opportunity. Some women are using it to defer their child bearing or child rearing so that they freeze their eggs at a young age, hang on to them, maybe build their career or develop their career or you know maybe even not necessarily career oriented, they just want time with their partner. And then they'll go back and use the frozen eggs from let's say their year 30 or 28 or 29 when they're now 36, 37 with the hopes that that gives you a better result. So there's a lot of this going on and we figured this would be very reasonable to look at. 
So they had 1,805 patients, 2,265 cycles, and the goal was to determine the probability of a live birth as a function of age. Now, I'm sure you've heard me on the show talk uh, numerous times about how important age is, and age is a critical, critical factor when we're treating patients for IVF and uh, getting their eggs out, because the older you are, the higher the probability that the eggs are of lower quality. So essentially what they looked at in this study was the outcomes of what they saw. So I'm gonna run through some numbers with you, okay? Overall survival and fertilization was 85% for survival and 79% for fertilization. So those are pretty robust numbers. Now this is using a technique called vitrification. The older technique was slow freezing. Nobody does that for egg freezing anymore. So I'm going to skip that data on the slow freeze. Everybody's using the vitrification technique. And they didn't find that the age of the woman actually had an impact on the survival or the fertilization of the eggs, which is really wonderful to hear because that means for the patients that are older, that component of it is not a huge concern. As far as the implantation rates were concerned, they saw that you had a high of 13.2% at the age of 30, dropping down to about 8.6% when you got to age 40, but you, they still saw live births even at advanced ages. Fewer, but they are there. Miscarriage rates um, did show age-related trends as well. So the older you get, the higher the risk. And it went anywhere from um, 19 to 22% for the vitrified eggs, depending on the age of the patient. So I'm going to share with you one of the um, slides. So bear with me here while we uh, lean into some technology here. And I'm going to just slide the few over and that is the data okay so hopefully uh for those of you watching on instagram uh, on instagram we cannot do this on ig but i'm going to explain the numbers for everybody else you should be able to see on your screens right now the data and i can hold it up if i find the right table for you guys here on instagram so uh where did that table go I'll have to find it. Okay, so in any event, there is a, a table showing the numbers. So if you look at the numbers here, you can see that depending on the age of the patient and the number of eggs that they got, and they broke it up into groupings of two, four, and six eggs that were either thawed, injected, um, and then into number of embryos transferred, they had different percentages. So I'm just gonna kind of highlight the average 35 year old, okay? So if we look at the 35 year old, that's this line here just above it. So if you had two eggs thawed, you had a 16% chance of ending up with a live birth at the age of 35. If you had four, it was 17%, and if you had six eggs thawed, it was 18%. If you had one embryo develop, you had a 7.2% chance of a live birth. If you had two embryos develop, you had a 12%. And if you had three embryos develop and transferred, so these are three you know, successive embryos, it added up to a 19.3% chance of live birth. Now those numbers are low. And so the idea that it's equivalent is simply not true because I can tell you we get way, way higher success rates with a embryo from a 35 year old that's done fresh than we see with the numbers that they have here. Even if you look at the youngest age group, which is up here, you can see again that in this age group here, and that's 25 years old, if you had one embryo transferred, you ended up with a 13% success rate. If you had two embryos transferred, 20.7. And if you had three embryos transferred, 31.5. So nowhere near what we would get from a 25 year old. For a 25 year old, we almost never fail at IVF. It would be highly unusual unless there's something really kind of bizarre going on with regards to their you know, health history or endometriosis or previous exposures or so on. So, or, or really poor quality sperm, for example. So typically we're gonna get 
80, 90% success rates in a 25 year old. It is nowhere near 31%. So while egg freezing is very reasonable and we do encourage patients to consider it, it's not necessarily the be all and the end all of every cycle. The most important thing I wanna show you on this, whoops, on this graph as well, if I get rid of this guy here and just move this up a little bit, you can see that by the time you're getting up into 40, you have to transfer three embryos just to get a 14.8% excuse me, excuse me, rate of success. So, um, and it drops down to 13.2% after three transferred embryos by the time you're at 42. So again, not robust numbers, they're fairly low. Look at what it is with just one embryo, 5.3% at 40, 4.7% at 42. So it is possible and it does give women a lot of hope, but fresh, on, in this study at least, definitely looks better than it does in, uh, you know, in comparison uh, to the frozen embryos that they're showing you here. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip back for a second and I'm gonna go through the other study because I wanna review that one as well. So this one's called Predicting the Likelihood of Live Birth for Elective Oocyte Cryopreservation, a Counseling Tool for Physicians and Patients. And it's a great study. They looked at um, all the cases they had done from 2011 to 2015. There's only 520, but they included all different groups, including a group of egg donor cycles as well. So here's some critical information to know. Number one, the egg donors on average had about 16.9 eggs that they retrieved. If you were less than 35, it was about 17, so roughly the same number. And then it progressively declined. So by the time you're 37, you're at just under 15, 14.7. By the time you're 38, 39, you're looking at 10 or 11. And when you get down to over 43, you're down to nine eggs retrieved for freezing. And in a 43 year old, nine eggs is actually quite a lot. We don't always even get nine eggs um, from the patients. And those aren't all mature. So when you look at the mature egg numbers, it was 12.5 for the egg donors and then goes anywhere from about a high of 14.6 at 36 years of age down to a low of 6.9 for the women greater than 39 years of age, or sorry, greater than 43 years of age. So I'm just gonna flip back again and I'll have to show our Instagram folks um, the graph, but bear with me for a second here while we flip over to the other study. Uh, yeah, no, the other one, sorry. Okay, so um, if I just scroll back a little bit, oh, wrong thing. So I'm gonna scroll back a little bit and show you guys um, in this study right here. So that's a graph of your age versus your outcomes. Um, in order to be able to see what's happening. So it's your probability of having a live birth versus the number of mature oocytes. And for those of you on Instagram, we're looking at this graph right here. So these are the numbers up here, okay? So the top number up in the, the, the tallest part of the curve, this one out here, and it's a, a blue color, that number is for donors. And essentially you can see, if I go back into the draw apparatus here, that you have to get, they said they had an average of about 12, right? So this is the line for 12 going right through here roughly. So at that point, you're gonna get in this, they're saying about an 80% chance if you get 12 eggs from a donor. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? Like we like that idea. And that's one live birth or at least one live birth. But by the time you're starting to look at someone 35, let's say, uh, or let's say even a little bit older, we'll take the yellow line, 36. So at 36, now you're down to about here. So you're down to 65%. If you get into someone that's 38, you're looking at the green line. So now we're cutting it even lower, about 45%. And when you get down into someone that's, you know, in their mid 40s or so, or early 40s, we're down in this range here, which is under 20%. Again, these numbers are not robust and you need quite a number of eggs. 
in order for those patients to achieve really good success, they need to be even lower than that, or sorry, even more eggs have to be produced than these, than just 11 or 12, in order for the patient to be able to get one live birth. So you're looking at loads and loads of eggs being produced in order to achieve a high degree of success. And if you can see up here, when I look at the top part of the graph, and I can show the Instagram folks again, so if you look up here, in order to get to the 100% point, you need an absolute truckload of eggs. 40 on average for most of the upper age, or lower age groups, so the under 36, 37, and you can't even get to 100% unless you literally have over 50 eggs for the older age groups. It's impossible to get 50 frozen eggs from someone who's in an older age group unless you're doing IVF over and over and over again, or they have exceptionally strong ovaries. So frozen eggs can work and they are a great option in particular for cancer patients, but they are not the same as getting fresh eggs and the success rates simply are not the exact same success rates. I'm just going to stop the screen share here and we can flip back to there. So I do love the opportunity to have the eggs. Uh, available to us in certain circumstances, especially if your particular racial background is difficult to match, or you just don't have the time to wait for a match to a live donor or a fresh donor, frozen eggs are definitely a great option. And luckily, many of the donor egg banks will offer guarantee packages where they guarantee you a live birth. They're pricey, but in certain circumstances like this, it may be worth it to consider doing that. But is it the same? No, it's definitely not the same. The outcomes of success with fresh eggs are definitely higher in the majority of circumstances compared to what they are like with the frozen. So is it a fact or a fiction that frozen eggs are the same? It is a fiction. It is not true that frozen eggs are gonna give you the same success rate as a fresh egg cycle will. You'll definitely do better in general with fresh eggs, but frozen eggs are still a viable option and need to be used in certain circumstances. So don't discount it, but also don't put all of your uh, you know, value and stock in that one option. There are other options for you usually. And if you give us enough time and enough effort, we can usually find those other options and make them work for you as well. So remember to like, comment, share. We always uh, love having that. We want the questions and we want uh, to make sure that we're addressing your, your questions and your comments. So uh, make sure you follow us on YouTube and uh, Instagram and Facebook. And we're going to turn to the uh, live part of the questioning now. So I'll put up a question. <laughs> 